What's up everyone, Matt here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're checking out Glaze 2. Again, this isn't really like a product review. I'll do a little overview of the plugin and the play series and how they work. But this is actually based on a social cut that I did for the native channel. And we're gonna break down the track. I'm gonna recreate it so you can see how I made it and adjust some of the parameters inside Glaze 2. Now, if you have Glaze 1, Glaze 2 has some similarities, but it is different. A lot of these vocals are extremely processed and they're very electronic and uh, they're just really cool sounding samples. Let's check out some of these presets. So this is like a riff and run preset. Over here, you kind of have a pad, which is cool. Let's see what else we got. It's like preset chords. And then same thing, you could play chords here if you wanted to. So when you see these different lights, the blue, that's like your riff and run or chords, and then the red are the individual notes that you can play. Let's go way down. And when they're all yellow, that means they're just all regular notes. This is a sequence. Pretty cool. think you can do a lot with them and use them as add-ons in your production or if you just want to start a track and you don't know where to go there's lots of like riff and runs and chord presets that are just there for you to play and trigger and resample and do all those things with them so great song starter really cool plugin I definitely see myself using it inside some upcoming productions so if you have any questions let me know in the comments and uh, you can check out the plugin down there it's not an affiliate link i don't get paid for it or anything like that again i just think it's a cool plugin so i thought i'd share my inside perspective let's dive in quick overview on the plugin here you can see on the bottom these are all your macro controls and they're controllable from the keyboard if you have one switches between sound source A or B. And then again, all your macros, which are a little bit different for every preset. They're kind of all mapped different to different effects and things like that. You also have this randomize button. Other than that, on the main page, you also can turn your sound on and off. You can search for different sounds. Can switch through different sounds on your sound page you have control over you know things like the envelope filters per sound you can also link these together and control two things at once so if we wanted to for instance make the attack long on both we could hit link turn the attack up and then on a you'll see it's also turned up or you can leave them unlinked and leave one high and one low lots of options there on the effects page, these are all your different effects. Drop down menu, you can switch between them. You can also rearrange these however you want. You have effect presets over here. You have a sequencer with different sequences for different macros. So you can set up different macros to control all these knobs. 
And this is for, you know, changing the division, the rate, the swing. If you're doing something with pitch, you can set the scale or the root note. You also have different directions, whether going forward, backward, how much. So lots of options in the sequencer. And then under macros, this is your individual macro control for anything being mapped to anything, basically. And if you click this, it takes you to what's being mapped. Other than that, settings page, you can control mono, legato, different velocity settings, what notes are playing what. This isn't really a breakdown of the full plugins, just to give you an idea of what it can do. It's similar to all the other play series, other than the fact that each one kind of has its own uh, effects and macro parameters that change the sound and kind of give it its own unique vibe. Let's give it up to the sponsor of this video, full-time music creator, my music production course that I've been building, currently in pre-launch or beta. You can head over to the website and watch my free 45-minute masterclass, including a breakdown of one of my biggest placements, which is a Post Malone WoW remix that I did for the NBA playoffs. And you can see how that track started with a loop and built out to a full big production that landed and got synced. So check out that in the description below. If you have any questions, let me know. Let's keep rolling. I have an instance of Glaze 2 loaded up and how it is right now over here, I have some chords. And then over here are just single notes that you can play from uh, sample B. Now you can't hear this. If we change the balance back. And in the middle. So that's one really cool thing that I like about Glaze too is having the option to play with your right hand, different melodies and stuff, and your left hand you can do either the chords or the riff and runs and different things like that. So there's a lot of options and a lot of crazy things you can do with just one patch, even by simply like playing chords and then changing the balance knob and playing a different melody here. So what I wanna do is record a melody using just the chords first. That's cool, so let's go ahead and track that in. Got that in there, let's just quantize, stretch all the notes. That's great. Now let's play a melody with the right hand. That's cool. Quantize that, 30 second notes. Now you can switch between them. So this is a really cool way to write something with just one plugin that has similar sounds that complement each other. And then you can use this bounce knob and automate that if you want to kind of go back and forth between different things. That's, that's really cool. Let's go to another instance of Glaze here. And I have a bass patch loaded up. So same thing, we have two different layers going on here. But I just want to use this for the bass. It's kind of cool that there's even bass in here and all of these samples derived from actual vocals. So they're just processed and affected with different sounds. You can see all these effects and stuff. And this one's kind of cool because it has like this little sequence modulation and it's turning the LFO on so you can hear it. And what it's doing is it's controlling the cutoff. which is pretty cool and you can, again, control all that in the macro page, LFO on and off. 
you see a switch. So let's use this sound. Which is a pretty nasty sounding bass. Let's record that. Quantize, stretch the notes. That's really cool because it's hitting those little LFO on and off on kind of those upbeat counts. So that's just a small example of what you can do with Glaze 2. I think if you have Glaze 1, it is very different because Glaze 1 is really just some riff and run presets. But if you're using it more for the melodies that you can actually play and the sound sources that you can play, with just normal keys as you would on a keyboard, then there is some similarities. But what I really like about Glaze 2 is how much more it's processed. The samples themselves sound like they've been processed with different effects and all sorts of different things before it even is processed inside the plugin itself. So you're kind of getting this like double processing and it's got a cool like electronic vibe to it going on. So again, Glaze 2, it's different. I think it's really cool if you have Glaze 1 a good addition. Let's add Machine in here and toss some drums on top of this. We got Machine loaded up on a track in Logic Pro. We got a cool sounding kit. Not going to use any of the samples, just the drums. It's kind of like a bit crush sound, so kind of lo-fi. It's cool. So let's start by just using note repeat and adding some hi-hats. Now one question I get a lot is, how do you sequence using machine and logic at the same time? And it is a bit confusing. So you'll see here, we kind of have two different sequencers that we're working with. And sometimes what I like to do is record maybe a four or eight bar loop inside machine. And then I drag the audio out of there into logic and just process it inside logic. But if you want to, you can just keep these two playheads aligned and I'll show you how that works in just a second. Let's do some hi-hats. So I'm gonna go to note repeat. We got some different divisions. And these are velocity sensitive, so let's hit record here. And I'm gonna hit record in Logic, and even though it's not gonna record anything in Logic, I'm just using it for the metronome to hear the count in. Got the hi-hats. So you can see it's two bars here, two bars here. Now if we keep this going, this will just loop because it's only set to two bars. Watch what happens. So this is gonna keep looping if it's not the same length. So if you wanted this to be the same length, you would double this to four bars. But for the sake of this demo, let's just keep it two and let's add a kick and a snare in here. We got that, sounds good. So what I might do in this situation is go to pattern and double this to make it four bars. And then we can also double this up here and make this four bars. And maybe just to keep things interesting, I will get rid of this lower melody. So let's see what that sounds like. Let's add some percussion. And that's a cool idea on how to just Make something quickly with Glaze 2. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Again, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Hit me with a like or a sub for the algorithm and stay tuned for more content coming out soon. We out.